Welcome to the Lacole Cycling Club and episode number five of Ask the Coach with me, Chris Opie. Today I'm answering your questions on do you need to live in the hills and ride on the hills regularly to be good at them, a question about accumulative fatigue and not being able to hit the numbers, and then finally a question about choosing your first cycling event or a main target for the summer. Question number one this week is from Jo and she would like to know, do you need to live in the hills and ride in the hills regularly to be good at riding up them? And that is luckily quite an easy answer. No is the real short answer. It's more to do with the type of intervals that you are conducting whilst you're on the bike and your aerobic fitness overall, which equates to your power to weight ratio when you end up riding uphill. In order to improve this, you can do exactly the same intervals on the flat. And whilst they're not quite the same as when you're riding uphill, you don't have quite the same torque loading on your muscles. The position isn't quite the same on the bike. You can do your absolute best to replicate it. You're gonna get around 90 to 95% of all the way to perfection. If you really want to improve that last few percent, then it will be beneficial to go and ride in the hills a little bit more. If you're anticipating the need to stand a lot on your hilly rides, this is something you can replicate at home before you go away. Ride for around 60 seconds to 90 seconds standing. You may have to put it into two heavier gears at the back, so drop it down one, maybe two gears to lower your cadence by around 50 to 20 RPM, and then simply pedal at the same intensity as you were pedaling, but this time standing. Another session you can try to do, and this depends on the type of length of the hills you're going to be climbing, is to use intervals for the duration of the climbs you're expecting. So imagine you're going to the Ardennes, and you're gonna be climbing for around seven to 12 minutes. Intervals that replicate this at home at VO2 intensity, so riding as hard as you can for seven to 12 minutes is a really good way to practice. Do three to four of these in a, in a 75 minute session. If you're going to the Alps or the Pyrenees and you expect to climb for around an hour, well then you're going to want to break that one hour duration of around zone four down into three or four chunks. So ride for 15 minutes at zone four, have a couple of minutes easy and then go again. You will have mini breaks when you're riding in the mountains through the hairpins, through different corners, through changes in the gradient. But building up that total overall time at that intensity is what's going to help you. As I said before, you can replicate riding in the hills fairly well by riding on the flat and adjusting the types of intervals and the way you ride. Another thing that could really help though is riding indoors and this is because of the amount of time that you're pedaling against the resistance and the lack of momentum on an indoor trainer. Whatever it is you choose to do to help train towards riding the hills, hopefully it works out for you and you enjoy your time when you do go to the hills. Question number two this week is from Joop in the Netherlands and he's a regular on our Lacole Zwift sessions. He wants to know why he's starting to find it harder and harder to complete the second and third sets of intervals on our rides. He's a regular attendee, he's ridden most of the rides for weeks and weeks if not months and months and is starting to find it a little bit harder than normal to complete that second and third block. I actually exchanged messages with Yope on this when he asked the question and we had a little bit of a deeper dive into some of his training and it appears that one of the main reasons is not just his home life, his work life outside of cycling, but is likely because he's not having frequent rest weeks. It's really important if you look at your cycling calendar once every two to three weeks or three to four weeks to have a week of reduced intensity and reduced volume. This is just enough breathing time for your body to make the adaptations which we're trying to cause it to make through training. When we're training, we're placing our body under quite a lot of stress and it's really important, especially when we have busy lives, to allow a little bit of time once a month for our body to catch up and just get back to that nice, fresh feeling ready to absorb more training in the coming month. If you don't do this, you can lead to a state of not necessarily overtraining, but just a state of under recovery where you're never quite achieving the freshness that you really want to have in your legs, in your body, in order to deep dig that little bit deeper in the coming sessions. Off the back of exchanging those messages with Yoke, we're looking to see if the rest week protocol every few weeks does indeed make a difference. And he's able to dig that little bit deeper into the second and third intervals of each session. Good luck, Yoke. We hope that it does make a difference for you. Our final question this week is from David and he wants to know how does he go about choosing an event? David, it's quite an open-ended question because the events in the world of cycling are so diverse now. I think the best place to start is to choose an event that not just appeals to you, but also challenges you. So imagine if most of your bike rides are around three hours in length at the weekends, that's your longest ride. If you're riding three hours regularly, once or twice a month, is what I mean by regularly, then you could challenge yourself to do a ride that's almost twice that distance, and that's likely to take you up and over that 100 mile barrier. So something like a Ride London 100, or the Etap du Tour, something that's in that sort of realms of dis distance, that's looking at up to around seven hours of cycling. 
If you want to try something completely different, the world of gravel riding is exploding in the UK, in Europe, in America. It's becoming more and more popular, but also more and more challenging. Some of the events are nice and short, under that three hour mark, but some of them really become ultra endurance events and you're going to be really testing yourself. I think one of the most important things when it comes to choosing an event is that you analyze what you're good at, what appeals to you, but also what's really going to challenge you, and that will help you train towards that event. Having just one or two really big headline events each year, which you build your fitness towards, which you motivate yourself towards, you wake up early to go out training for, maybe ride at the weekend when you perhaps otherwise wouldn't because the weather was bad, is a really special feeling. And then when you get to that event, the sort of excitement that you have knowing that you've trained hard for it and the anticipation of going out and just seeing how well you can do is a very special experience and something which I think all cyclists deserve to have at some point in their cycling journey. David, we wish you the very best of luck with whichever type of event it is you go for. Maybe it's even a bike race. Let us know how you get on. We really hope you find the advice in these videos useful. Please do drop us a question in the comments box down below if you have any cycling related questions. And if you haven't already done so, check out the Ask the Coach feature on the LCCC website. Look forward to seeing you again next week.